centro de la pampa vive un pimiento Sol y viento pa' su vida, sol y viento Hello, I'm Patrick Barnard. Welcome to the 70th edition of the Pimento Report. Today we're going to have a kind of poetic pimento. It's called Reflections on Walt Whitman, and we're going to do two things. Ten minutes from where I am right now is a Quebec Cégep or community college. It's called Dawson College, the largest of its kind in Quebec. And at that college, there's a very unusual two-year program which is called Reflections. It draws upon the resources of a number of different departments. Right now, one of the coordinators of the Reflections program at Dawson is Paul Hawkins. Hawkins is a teacher, a writer, a director, an actor, and at the present time he's preparing a very unusual theatrical program which has to do with the life and work of Walt Whitman. And we're going to find out about Walt Whitman today. He's the man who in 1855, with a small book of poetry called Leaves of Grass, changed forever the course of poetry in the United States and the Americas. So that's our journey today. We're going out on the open road. Our voyage will start in the corridors of an institution and end with blades of grass. So let us set out together right now. I'm here at Dawson College. It's the summer of 2013, June, the month of June. It's very quiet in here. I'm walking towards the reflections room on the fourth floor of the college. This is a very well-known place because over two generations, the reflections program at the college has uh, enriched the lives of many, many people. It's an open program. Anyone can go into it. There's the famous bulletin board of reflections and the room in its 4E.15 reflection. So we'll just go in there right now. I think Paul is in his office. Here's this room where over the last 10 years or so, hundreds, I would say several thousand people, have received uh, an education here at the CEGEP level, a very unusual kind. Reflections is a multidisciplinary uh, program. People consider all kinds of things, religion, history, psychology, literature. It's open to anybody. There are no prerequisites. Anyone can come. It's humanistic education at its best. So now we're going into another office. I think Paul is in there. I think someone's there at the desk. There he is. Hello, Paul. How are you? Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. This has been the home of Reflections for about 10 years, but Reflections is actually about 40 years old, right? Um, it, Reflections it has been in existence since the fall of 1970, so that would mean we're starting our 44th year. Um, and Reflections has been in this room as long as um, Dawson has been at the Mother House, has been here uh, since 1988, actually. Yeah. Now, an awful lot of people have gone through the program. In fact, several thousand people. Um, they've gone all over the world. Some of them are very well known, such people as Naomi Klein, Adam Gopnik. Um, really, it's been a rewarding experience for an immense number of uh, students. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been rewarding for you too, is that right? Well, absolutely, yeah. It's been a, it's been an, it's been a terrific environment um, in which to work. Um, terrific students. Um, one of the things that we're most proud of is that um, we say we attract motivated and interested students. That frequently means we attract students with very good uh, to excellent academic abilities, but we don't admit the students on the basis of their grade average. Um, students attend an information session, and if they are interested in what we teach and in the seminar style, uh, way in which we teach it, which the room, of course, that you've seen is, uh, is, is, is perfect for. If students are interested, they can sign up. And so that, what that means is we, get, we do get a wide range of academic abilities, but students are, are interested in being taken to the next level. It means that we have a, it had, we have a very uh, uh, healthily non-competitive atmosphere. And um, so that's, and as, yeah. far as, as far as we know, that those, those, some of those features make us unique. And mm -hmm. I see just the posters on your wall here, Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman, a play mm -hmm. by Tennessee Williams. I see Salvador Dali's uh, Crucifixion, very mm -hmm. famous painting. Then a, a, a lithograph, uh, an etching about Paradise Lost. So that is the kind of uh, material mm -hmm. that people study here. 
Yes, very, absolutely. very rich, beautiful stuff. Absolutely, and it's uh, not going sort of too. So it's not saying it's not going too far to say it's because I teach in this program that I have taught some of this material. It's interesting because you you were saying you know this this is uh, the etching uh, illustration of. Adam and Eve and the Serpent from Paradise Lost was done by a student uh, in a seminar in which I, in which I taught Paradise Lost. Uh, and I've, I've taught that seminar uh, frequently, so that was one particular semester. This, uh, this was done by a student as well. How does Walt Whitman come into this? <laughs> How does Walt Whitman come into this? Well, we decided to do a theme called Life Journeys. Uh, it just so happens that the, the opening of Whitman's Song of the Open Road, uh, I used to use, uh, before teaching in Reflections, as a day one um, writing exercise to get a writing sample out of students in the, in the first day of class of an introduction to college English class, which is the first class that we all teach at SAGEPS or that, that students take at SAGEPS. Um, a foot and light hearted I take to the open road, healthy, free, the world before me, the long brown path before me, leading me wherever I choose. Henceforth, I ask not good fortune. I myself am good fortune. Strong and content, I travel the open road. Um, to travel the open road means to be yourself. It means to. Um, uh, it means to. It means to. It means to leave um, the libraries. And I think that's. It's not that Whitman does not love books and value books, but as he says also in the Song of Myself. You must listen to all sides and take things in and filter them from yourself. So, so to travel the open road is to be free, is to be yourself, is to be an individual, um, is to be healthy. Um, you know, uh, is to is to say, uh, henceforth I ask not good fortune. I myself am good fortune. I think. I mean, those are just those are just tremendous, tremendous free, healthy, strong um, lines. My tongue, every atom of my blood, formed from this soil, this air, born here of parents born here, from parents the same and their parents the same. I, now 37 years old, in perfect health begin, hoping to cease not till death. Creeds and schools in abeyance, retiring back a while, sufficed at what they are, but never forgotten, I harbor for good or bad, I permit to speak at every hazard, nature without check with original energy. I will go to the bank by the wood and become undisguised and naked. I am mad for it to be in contact with me. The smoke of my own breath, echoes, ripples, buzzed whispers, love root, silk thread, crotch and vine. My respiration and inspiration, the beating of my heart, the passing of blood and air through my lungs, the sniff of green leaves and dry leaves, and of the shore and dark-colored sea rocks, and of hay in the barn, the sound of the belched words of my voice loosed to the eddies of the wind, a few light kisses, a few embraces, a reaching around of arms, the play of shine and shade on the trees as the supple boughs wag, the delight alone or in the rush of the streets or along the fields and hillsides, the feeling of health, the full noon trill, the song of me rising from bed and meeting the sun. Stop this day and night with me, and you shall possess the origin of all poems. You shall possess 
the good of the earth and sun. There are millions of suns left. You shall no longer take things at second or third hand, nor look through the eyes of the dead, nor feed on the specters in books. You shall, you shall not look through my eyes either, nor take things from me. You shall listen to all sides and filter them from yourself. Now you just read some uh, Whitman. Mm -hmm. When you read that or the students read it in Reflections, what's their, what's their reaction to Whitman? I think um, often that he's uh, all over the place, <laughs> that he's hard to follow, that he's... Uh, um, um, but I think uh, the hope is that students, will, students also get, and some, some of them do get, that he's, uh, uh, he's very individual, he's very passionate, he's full of celebration of himself, of life. I have a question. Sure. <laughs> Are you teaching or encouraging your students to be free? <laughs> uh, they, might not always say, they might not always say so, but it's the hope, it's the, it's the ideal, yeah. yeah. <laughs> America, center of equal daughters, equal sons, all, all alike and dear. Grow, ungrow, young or old, strong, ample, fair, enduring, capable, rich, perennial with the earth, with freedom, law, and love. You know, in the preface to Leaves of Grass, he talks of Americans as a nation of nations, the race of races, almost as the universal species. Mm. Um, does it matter at all that he's American or that he has that idea of Americans? Or do you ever talk about that with students? Of course, sure. I mean, um, uh, one thing that comes up in Song of Myself, which is, which is what most of the text I was reading is from, it's, from, it's the opening of Song of Myself, um, Canada is a part of Whitman's America. I think uh, when Whitman speaks of America, he's speaking of all of North America. I think sometimes he even includes South, uh, South America in his in his vision of America. So it's um, you know his, it's a vision really of the Americas of the New World, and his uh, his poetry has been very very inspirational for uh, Latin American poets um, uh, within within our time. Um, so. I also hope I also point out to students that it's it's that his Americanism I think has to itself be understood as not just about the United States of America that we know today and and plus and he's he's speaking of an ideal he's celebrating you know the ideal of America he was aware in his time that um, the real America did not live up to the ideal and I think you know we can see that we can see that today. Too. I tramp a perpetual journey. My signs are a rainproof coat and good shoes and a staff cut from the woods. No friend of mine takes his ease in my chair. I have no chair, nor church, nor philosophy. I lead no man to a dinner table or library or exchange. But each man and each woman of you I lead upon a knoll. My left hand hooks you round the waist. My right hand points to landscapes and continents and a plain public road. Not I, not anyone else can travel that road for you. You must travel it for yourself. Shoulder your duds and I will mine and let us hasten forth wonderful cities and free nations we shall fetch as we go. Long enough have you dreamed contemptible dreams now I wash the gum from your eyes. You must habit yourself to the dazzle of the light and of every moment of your life. And as to you, life, I reckon you are the leavings of many deaths. No doubt I have died myself 10,000 times before. I bequeath myself to the dirt to grow 
from the grass I love. If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. You will hardly know who I am or what I mean, but I shall be good health to you nevertheless and filter and fiber your blood. Failing to fetch me at first, keep encouraged. Missing me one place, search another. I stop somewhere waiting for you. A child said, what is the grass? Fetching it to me with full hands. How could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he. I guess it must be the flag of my disposition, out of hopeful green stuff woven. Or I guess it is the handkerchief of the Lord, a scented gift and remembrancer designedly dropped, bearing the owner's name some way in the corners that we may see and remark and say, whose? Or I guess the grass is itself a child, the produced babe of the vegetation. Or I guess it is a uniform hieroglyphic and it means sprouting alike in broad zones and narrow zones, growing among black folks as among white, Canuck, Tuckahoe, Congressman, Cuff, I give them the same, I receive them the same. And now it seems to me the beautiful uncut hair of graves. Tenderly will I use you curling grass. It may be you transpire from the breasts of young men. It may be if I had known them I would have loved them. It may be you are from old people and from women and from offspring taken soon out of their mother's laps. And here you are, the mother's laps. This grass is very dark to be from the white heads of old mothers, darker than the colorless beards of old men, dark to come from under the faint red roofs of mouths. Oh, I perceive after all so many uttering tongues and I perceive they do not come from the roofs of mouths for nothing. I wish I could translate the hints about the dead young men and women, and the hints about old men and mothers, and the offspring taken soon out of their laps. What do you think has become of the young and old men? And what do you think has become of the women and children? They are all alive and well somewhere. The smallest sprout shows there is really no death. And if there was, it led forward life and does not wait at the end to arrest it and ceased the moment life appeared. All goes onward and outward and nothing collapses and to die is different from what anyone supposed and luckier. Has anyone supposed it lucky to be born I hasten to inform him or her, it is just as lucky to die and I know it.